this mindset that we worship God on Sunday, and we worship God when we go to church on Wednesday, and we worship God if we're praying, but what about if we're just drinking a cup of coffee at our kitchen table? Can we be worshiping God? Absolutely. Can uh, we worship God uh, through a casual conversation? Absolutely. Because my conversation can be totally worldly or it can be totally godly. And, and if I'm worshiping God, it will end up being totally godly because God, I will want to honor God with my words. And when we want to honor God <clears throat> with our words, it's worship. I'm yielding to God's greatness. I'm yielding to God's presence. I'm yielding to the Holy Spirit uh, working in me. And I'm saying that I want my words to count for the kingdom. And so it is a form of worship. When um, you're listening, as you're doing right now, uh, listening is worship if you are listening uh, with the intent of worshiping God and taking heed in Luke 18 how you hear. Luke 8, 18. Taking heed how you hear the Word of God. Um, many people, and we know this through the parable of the sower, many people get distracted as soon as the Word's being preached. That's the devil. <laughs> But a person who wants to worship uh, recognizes that, and they've already prayed uh, to prepare their hearts in worship. And my worship now is not singing and praising God with my hands, but it's listening. And so my listening becomes a form of worship that's just as powerful as me singing and praising God. And by the way, the singing and praising God is like, can be an amazing struggle for us sometimes, can it? You ever feel like there's something holding your hand down, you want to put it up, but it's like, you know, and then you go, like, you know, real quick. It's warfare against you praising and worshiping God, you know, just letting it go and praising God. I don't know if any of you has been listening to the devotionals in the morning by Pastor Shalom, but he's been on this thing of singing. You know, and he doesn't have the greatest voice. We know this. I think he knows this. Uh, but it doesn't matter to him because he's worshiping God. It's real, true worship. And you would listen. A, a person who wasn't in tune with the Spirit would listen to it and say, "Shut that off." You know, what is this guy crazy? And it's like amazing though because he, you can sense that he's truly worshiping God. He loves God. And he just wants to sing a hymn to him in praise and worship to God. And he doesn't care what he sounds like. Because his heart has gone beyond his voice and entered into true worship of God. You know, Jesus said to the moment of the law, well, that those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. So worship, uh, I think we as a church, as a people, as believers, we need to learn how to worship not just singing, but worship God. Like every part of our lives has to become a form of worship. And you say, well, you sound a little hyper-spiritual in that. No, I don't at all. Because when God, with the songs that we just sang, said it, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for the thing I made it. What did they make it in that song? They made it about the song. That group, that song was written about a group that was making worship about the song and the music they were playing, how good they sounded how well they blended. And it's easy for musicians to do that. It's one of the, the most difficult things for mu musicians to overcome is their talent and their ability to play music and enter into true worship of God and let God take over the music part of the service. We should we need to let God take over the prayer part of the service. And we, can, and we can pray a certain way and think, I need to pray like this and say this. But let God lead you in prayer. Take a moment and be silent and let God motivate you through worship. I want to worship God with what I say and even what I pray to Him right now. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit in my prayer time. And as a, 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 a group, a corporate prayer, uh, we should do that in the church service. You want to uh, experience an anointing then enter into unity and worship and prayer, and then worship and song, and then worship and listening, and then me uh, in worship and preaching. 
worshiping, preaching. It's easy to, to have, <clears throat> to make, well, not sometimes it's easy, but, you know, study, make notes, get a thought, get a message, get, get it all down doctrinally and all this, and then, like, totally forget about what the Holy Spirit once said. You know, they say, uh, the Holy Spirit starts tapping on your eyes, they are. I want you to share about this. No, 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 I, I've got this. I've been at this for three hours now. You know, this is what I'm going to say. What's wrong with it? Nothing's wrong with it. But is it true worship? Are you being led by the Spirit? I, it's important for preachers to understand this, to, to worship God in the message, to worship God uh, in whatever they're doing, and instead of living by a concept of what they should do or what they're supposed to do. You know, I, um, we're going to be sharing at the funeral later, and it, here's somebody who died unexpectedly. And uh, he said, "Well, we have to, we have to be a certain way, and we have to show our sorrow and our sympathy." Well, what about worship at a funeral? Is, is, should we do that? Yes, we should do that. Worshiping God will enable you to minister God to people who will be there who need to be ministered to. But it's worshiping God, being led by the Holy Spirit. Worship is a lifestyle. It's my life. I, if, if you really think about it, when we worship, we are uh, yielding to God in every area of my life. Every area of my life. So it, it goes into your home. It goes into your personal thoughts. I can worship God uh, by what I'm thinking about. I can think of all kinds of things where I could cast down certain thoughts that aren't godly and worship God with my thought life. Worship God with meditating on a verse. I'm worshiping God. It's not me, it's God. It's not about me like the song said, it's God. And so my focus is on God which takes me out of the picture. And it takes the insecurity of me worshiping out of the picture, or it should. So I don't feel weird about praising God with my hand because I'm entering into worship and it's like an automatic response to the holiness of God in my life. So my hand goes up and prays to God, lifting up holy hands. We sing that all the time. And it's and I don't have to say, well, I don't, nobody's looking, I don't, I'm not comfortable. Focus on worshiping God and let God motivate the hand to go up or not, or your voice to lift up in praise or not. It's a beautiful experience when we do that. It takes the striving of, of uh, conceptualized Christianity out of the picture totally. And we don't have to worry about if I'm doing this right or doing that, and who's watching and who's seeing, and I don't feel comfortable, and it's awkward, this and that, and it just enters into worship. and. Really, we have to get to a place in, as a church and in individuals where worship is the most important thing. It's like, that sounds kind of funny. Isn't, like I was, isn't uh, missions the most important thing? Some pastors would say it is the most important thing. Or soul winning or having faith in God. Isn't these the most important things? And we say, well, no, because there will become a day when faith isn't needed anymore. When Christ returns and he sets up his kingdom on earth, you will not need faith anymore. You will see him, you know? Uh, we will, won't need missionaries anymore when Christ returns. He's on earth, everybody's gonna know who he is and there's no more debate or argument about it. He's God, he's here, he's on the throne. Buddha's not on the throne. Muhammad's not going to be on the throne. Jesus is going to be on the throne. And it's going to be settled. And so you won't need missionaries to say, there's a Jesus and he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Because they look, he's right there. Like, you want to argue with that? No, no one will be able to argue with that. Right? Uh, but worship will be there forever. Worship will always be there. When... Um, when eternity happens and we're in eternity, what is everyone going to be doing? Worshipping God. Worshipping God. Worshipping, read Revelation. Worshipping God around the throne. The ones who will be headed in tribulation in this earth will be worshipping God around the throne. 
That's what that's going to be the primary thing because God deserves the worship and the glory and the honor. And we get to do it here on this earth now. We get to worship God in spirit and in truth. And let our let our old sin nature take a back seat and all the, the anxiety and the cares of the world and all this stuff and the stress and enter into worship with God and not just during the song service. But preparation before the song service and prayer in your life and meditating on God and opening the book when you open the Bible at home by yourself is worship. I can open it and read it in the natural and I can get frustrated with it and, and try and figure it out or I can enter into worship like when you say, Lord, let me behold wondrous things out of your law. I want to worship you as I read the word. You know, and it it begins to open up to you in a in a whole different light, and you are recognizing the glory of God and His power and His majesty and all of the attributes of God and how much greater God is than anything that ever existed, and that He is before all things and by Him all things uh, consist, and that He, he spoke. His word in the world came into being. And we begin to enter into what this means. And, you know, when people go outside at night and they look up at the stars and they just gaze at them and they wonder at them and some people begin to worship the order of the universe instead of the one who made the order of the universe. And they get distorted in their worship. They begin to worship false idols and worship things that are unworthy of worship. And it's so easy for a human heart to do that, isn't it? To worship something that is unworthy of worship. They don't deserve it. Because it's, they're not. There's only one thing that's worthy of our worship, and it's God. And so, I'm not singing to let people hear what a good voice I have. Or <clears throat> might have one, or I might not have one. But I'm singing praises to God because He is worthy of worship this morning. I'm listening not because the pastor speaks so well and 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 uh, he can quote all these verses and all of this, but I'm listening because God is being spoken about through the pastor. The Holy Spirit is motivating him to speak the things of God and it, it's penetrating my heart and my soul and it's worthy of worship. You know, the man isn't worthy of worship. The Lord speaking to the man is the one who's worthy of worship, right? So the preaching of the word, which to the natural mind is foolishness. People scratched their heads at us this morning saying, what are you doing in a building on a 95 degree day listening to some guy talk about pie in the sky, heaven and all this? They don't understand worship. They don't understand corporate worship. They don't understand personal worship. They don't understand worship, period what it means to worship God and recognize Him for who He is and what He has done and that He alone is worthy of our worship in every aspect of our life. Coming to church is just an amazing opportunity for my worship and your worship and in your worship to meet together in corporate worship and it just builds this praise up to God that is amazing and God is blessed by it. This is what... what um, fellowshipping around the body of Christ, with the body of Christ, around the throne of God, is meant to be. A time where uh, <clears throat> I come to worship God, we come to worship God. But the devil has done a good job in watering down worship to a song, to a, uh, a set of songs and playing in music, and then when they sit down and we clap and and, and by the way, when we sing a song and we clap, you know, um, we clapping for the band because they sounded good or we clapping because God was honored with the band's music. It, it, you can do both, uh, but we should make mindful that the band is singing and the, the singers are singing uh, praises to God and it has entered our hearts through our ears and has caused us to want to worship. And so we, we, we clap to God uh, in that worship. Imagine the power 
when that enters into all of us, and we're not concerned about anything else but worshiping God in the moment, uh, wow, something might happen. Something might happen. Um, I forget who said it, it was a famous preacher. He said, when, when the word of God is being preached, something is going to happen. It always does. It's, it's the power of God and it, because it's centered around worship. Preaching is worship, singing is worship, praying is worship, uh, living my life as a believer who has been bought by the blood of Christ is worship, right? The way I conduct my life is worship. I don't leave it at the door of the church when I leave and then go about my, my regular duties of life and then I come back and enter into worship again. Say, that was a great worship service. What was, the music or the whole service? The whole service, that was wonderful. Well, let's take it with us. Let's take it with us. Let's worship God in our houses. Let's worship God when we're talking with our children. Let's worship God when I'm on the job site. I could swear and I could get angry like the world does or I can worship God with the way I work, with, like, with the, the way I choose to live, with what I choose to listen to, what I choose to look at. I can worship God with my eyes. I can worship God with my ears. I worship Him with my voice. I'm worshiping with my heart. My heart that can be so deceitful and so wicked, but it can worship God in, in, the, in the beauty of His holiness. Not my holiness, not my self-righteousness, His holiness. I recognize God's holiness in all situations in my life, and I enter into worship. And it's not something that I do, uh, you know, in a striving way, say, oh, I, I gotta worship God while I'm drinking my coffee here, yeah, because Pastor Jim said so, no. How do I do that? I'm, I, do I mix it a certain way? Do I drink it a certain way? No. And my mindset is on God, you know? Uh, what does God have for me today? I could sit there with my coffee and my water, and I can say, oh, I got to do this today, I got to do that, I hope I don't see so-and-so, I hope I don't run into them, I don't have uh, the, the problem at work, I can't believe it, I can't wait till I go to bed tonight. And you haven't even left the door yet. And God, you can say, God, this is going to be an amazing day. I can worship God. Well, God, you made today, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know what today is going to hold, Lord, but you do. Can you take care of situations for me? Keep my tongue. Keep me from getting angry. Be, let, let me be led by your spirit, Lord. Uh, Bless the words that I share with people. Let it be your words and your thoughts. And it's amazing the kind of uh, peace that comes over you. And, and that peace goes out with you as you walk out the door or you go about your daily routine, whatever it is. It's a, but I can honor God in every aspect of my life by worshiping Him and including Him in those decisions. The moment I leave God out, I stop worshiping. I, 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 I turn to my own will, my own desire, my own thought, and I start thinking uh, in, in my natural mind, and worship goes out the door. It goes out the door. And sadly to say, it's no guarantee just because you're in this chapel that worship is in your mind and in your heart. You could be gone somewhere else and worship is not here. Uh, or you can enter into that worship anytime, anytime by turning to God and focusing on God's uh, provision, God's power, His plan, His purpose for your life. And focusing on the holiness of God. Just the holiness of God. If you focus on the holiness of God, and I focus on the holiness of God, I will, I will, and you can't help but enter into worship. When you think about all that He has done, all that He is, and that there is none like Him, your heart can't help but enter into worshiping God. And, and you, you might be in your car driving, and, and maybe you are all stressed out and angry over somebody that cut you off, or somebody did something to you, and you're mad and all this, and then, uh, maybe you put a CD on and it's a hymn, it's a praise song, or it's a message, and then the Holy Spirit starts, starts working on you, and before you know it, you start humming. Like, I don't want to hum, I'm angry. 
But you start, huh? I love this song. And the song ministers to you, but that song is directing you to worship God. This is what's great about true praise worship music. It directs you to God. Uh, the, the musicians play and it should direct you to God. Not to anything else, but to God. Not to themselves, but to God. The singers are singing and they should be directing you to God. Uh, the preacher is preaching, he should be directing you to God. You know, and you are praying and your prayers are directed to God because it's all about God and God is the supreme being and he, is, he alone is worthy of our praise. He alone. And there's nothing else that I can do or offer to God except give him my praise and his due honor and uh, his due worship from us. And, and, and true praise. And, and really, that's what worship is about this morning. Um, yielding my life to Him. Yielding my thoughts to Him. And yielding it more than just when I'm singing or when I'm at church, but in my, my everyday life. In my decision making. In, in uh, my conversations. And uh, my interactions with people. You want people to see God, worship Him, that's all. Like, if you're worshiping God, uh, then people, you'll never have to worry about whether people see God in your life or not, because they do when you worship God. There's a reflection that happens and people see it as you're doing it because you've made a personal decision in your heart that this is what I want to do. And I'm not saying you have to be perfect or anything like that. God knows, none of us are perfect. God knows it better than anybody that we're not perfect. But, I purpose, even when I'm not perfect, to yield to God. And the Holy Spirit says, hey, you know, that's not right. Cut it out. You say, yes, God, you're right. I'm sorry. Worship. Worshiping God. In repentance, in sorrow, I'm worshiping God. In my failure, I'm worshiping God. Because I'm not giving myself permission to continue. I'm not saying it doesn't matter. I'm saying you're right, God. You're right, God. You know best. I'll yield to you. And that's, that's worship. That's worship. Um, let's endeavor to, to find out from God and to enter into what a life of worship is all about. Let God speak to you as you go through your life in this area and show you times when you are in true worship and maybe times that you need to get into true worship and, and see the amazing results of it that God will do. Amen? Amen. Father, we, we pray right now if there's any in this room or any watching that have never received you as Lord and Savior, Oh boy, you want to worship God? Receive Him into your heart. Receive Him. He is worthy of worship. He wants to have a relationship. Can you imagine that? God who is the creator of the heavens and the earth and the universe and is Lord of Lord and Kings of Kings. He wants to come into your heart and have a relationship with you. That's amazing. Not because you're a great person, not because you deserve it, but because He loves you. And that makes us want to worship Him even more. If you've never had a chance to receive Christ, if you'd like to, say this prayer right now in your heart, dear Lord Jesus, I'd like to receive you as my Lord and Savior. I recognize that I'm a sinner, and when you died on the cross for my sins, I'm asking you to come into my heart. And if you're saying that here in this room today, I want to put your hand, I want to pray for you. If you said it already before, you don't have to say it again, you're saved forever. If you're watching you saying it, if you want to drop us a line at Crossroad Christian Church, 15 Lynn Street in PV, we will <coughs> send you out a Bible and some information. Father, we thank you that, that we can worship the world in spirit and in truth, that we can be honest with you about who we are and still worship you, that you don't cast us off, you don't reject us when we fail, Lord, you encourage us to come and to draw near, to come boldly to the throne of grace, Lord. Uh, 
we can love you, Lord, because you first loved us. And that love is worship. Our adoration is true worship, Lord. We praise you right now, Lord. We worship you in Christ's name.